Welcome back to Book View Now, our coverage of the Miami Book Fair here in Miami, Florida, downtown Miami. A lot going on all day, and I'm joined now by two novelists, Derek Palacio, whose new book is The Mortifications, and Patricia Engel, The Veins of the Ocean. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. I, I, I wanna, uh, you're both writing about displaced people, which is interesting, and maybe that's why we put you together. <laughs> Imagine that. But I want to give you a chance to talk, just explain a little bit about the novel you wrote, or at least how you saw it. Do you want to go first? Sure. Um, the Mortification sort of concerns a Cuban family in the early 1980s, um, where the mother decides that in the interest of her children, it would be best to leave the island. Uh, and in doing so, they leave the father behind. Um, and a lot of the novel concerns sort of their journey uh, in sort of roundabout ways back to the island to sort of reconcile that, that family rift that happens in the first few pages. Okay, and Patricia? Um, the novel begins with um, a horrible crime, which I can say is a child being thrown off of a bridge, and it's narrated by a young woman named Reina who um, has to come to term with the, facts that, with the fact that both her brother and her father were capable of committing this terrible crime, and her brother sentenced to, to death. Um, and her, the beginning of the novel follows um, her, her devotion to him while he's serving his death sentence, and then after his subsequent death, the rebuilding of her life mm -hmm. um, far away from home where nobody knows her, and how she comes to, term with the trauma, uh, comes to terms with the trauma of her past, as well as um, the hope for a better future. You know, the beginning is such a dramatic, thing, right, mm -hmm. event. Was that the first thing that came for you in the, in the novel, in the writing? Yes, it started with a single image, which was that of a child being thrown off of a bridge, which was a story that I heard, which may or may not have even been true. You but heard it? You mean yeah, from it where? My mother told me once when we were driving past a bridge that a man a long time ago had thrown a baby off of it. Wow. So um, I started to wonder what would have led up to an event like that? What would have propelled somebody to do that? What would have happened to the child or the people who knew this child? So it began from there as a short story. And that, that original short story is now the opening chapters of the novel. And it began a long time ago. It's not, I mean, at least the colonel was there from yeah, your mother telling you. that story I wrote in about 2008. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I wrote two other books in the meantime. And it kind of haunted me. And I came back to it to write the novel. Uh-huh. And Derek, yours is a, a kind, a, an epic in a different way. Mm -hmm. Did it start, where did it start? You know, it started when I was sort of uh, spending a lot of time thinking about uh, my father's experience of Cuba. He left when he was very young, uh, so he doesn't remember much of the island. He has got some snippets and some, mm -hmm. some small visuals he carries with him. Um, but I got very fascinated with the idea of a person who could leave a place and then have trouble holding on to it. Um, and I wanted to sort of explore what would be that drawback? What are some, why do those memories persist um, as limited as they may be? I was just saying to you before we started that you can't name a, a main character, Ulysses, <laughs> in a story of exile and return yeah. without obviously conjuring up Homer, yeah. right, in the Odyssey. Is that what you, I mean, was that the basis for the idea? Is it, it's deliberate, obviously. It's deliberate, yeah. I would say it's sort of having that, the book, the novel, in conversation with that very famous, very well-known epic um, was very fruitful for me in writing the book um, simply because for me, uh, even up until publication date, I didn't have a chance to go visit Cuba. I've, I've since gone, uh, got my first trip there two weeks ago. Really? Um, which was really amazing. After the book came After out. After the book came oh. out. Um, so Cuba for me has sort of had, held a, a mythic place in my mind. So that sort of understanding of the island, pairing that with um, just, you know, the, the arch narrative of a man trying to get home yeah. um, was really, it worked well for me. Well yeah, but page. it's still kind of... Um I mean, on television, what are we allowed to say? Gutsy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go further to about, um, you know, of, of to, to the allusion to Homer. And then later on, you have other classical mm -hmm. texts in there. So you just decided, I'm going for it? Yeah, you know, I don't have, I'm not very, uh, I'm not very delicate. So <laughs> I was sort of, I could just bluntly run towards it um, yeah. and see if something good came of it. And I, I feel like uh, there are times in the novel where that really works well. Uh, Another theme that you've got is that, as you say, this sort of past and pe people dealing with the aftermath, but a character incarcerated, mm -hmm. right? So there's a kind of alternative life mm -hmm. of what might have happened. Yeah. Is that what you were? Tell me, tell me about that. 
Um, originally, I was interested in incarceration and not only how that affects the lives of prisoners, but of the families of the incarcerated who very often are, are dealing with pain and shame and having to reconcile the love they have for somebody who, who did something terrible and in some ways that deems them unfit for life you know, in the case of a death mm -hmm. penalty or just unfit for society. So that, that's where it began. But then I also became interested in just the notion of captivity, not only in incarceration, but in the, the captivity, sentimental exile, um, you know, in relation to a real geographic exile and how that relates to immigration. Because you have a character, the narrator comes from Colombia and the other main character comes from Cuba. So they're experiencing exile and captivity and imprisonment in um, very real ways, but also very internal ways. But would you say, it's interesting when I talk to writers, you say, I was interested in the idea of, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it starts with an idea, sometimes it starts with a character. Mm -hmm. or, or earlier, as you said, it started from driving past a bridge and your mother tell you. Mm -hmm. But when you say you're interested in the idea of, what does that mean? Did that drive the actual plotting, writing well, of the story? I think very often writers have obsessions that follow them from work to work. Incarceration uh -huh. uh, has appeared in my previous works uh -huh. because it's something that, that was close to me in my own life. And I've always been interested in, in the moral complexity of, of crime and what humans are capable of. How do you um, accept that someone who you thought is good can do something bad? And, 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 and w what does love have to do with it? So it does start as an idea, and from there the characters begin to emerge and a story starts to unfold. But it, r it really starts with an exploration. Yeah. Uh, you are going to say? Oh, you know, I, th um, I would say that the idea of things, um, I, I too am like writing mm -hmm. similar things uh, that appeared in the modifications now in my, in my current work, and so I agree with that concept of the obsessions uh, returning. Um, I think where it really it takes on heat is where like those obsessions sort of hit um, or connect with sort of some sort of emotional experience and emotional core, uh, and the two of those things sort of catch fire. Uh, and that's where the story really gets and started. And when did that happen in this case? Uh, with this case, I think it was in the, you know, I read a little bit in a panel earlier today um, where the main character retells a story that his father had told him uh, about taking his first train ride. Uh, and that's a story that my father told me. It's, a real, it's a, one of the parts of the book that are true um, that really happened. And something about playing with his memory and writing around his memory and pulling, uh, trying to find stories within his memories um, that I would think was the, the, the flashpoint for this narrative. This, so, this so well, so how much, of the, how much of that is connected to the truth or family history? Or um, there, uh, there are some, just some visual echoes in there. Uh, you know, like I said, my, he, my father only has like a very, a few, a handful. Yeah. Um, there's some other autobiographical elements. You know, the characters, and these Cuban characters go and live in Hartford and, and New England, and I grew up in New England. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some overlaps there, but the, the storyline itself is, is, is definitely all fiction. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about, this is your first yep. book, right? Mm -hmm. And it's your second novel? My third. Third novel. So you can give him advice. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, is it, has it gotten easier, different? What's the experience of writing now? I don't think it, it gets easier. I actually think it gets harder because as you, you write more, you learn more, and uh, you want, in order to, to finish a book, you've got to be interested in it yourself, and that's only interesting when you're challenged by it. So I think you push yourself from book to book. Mm. Um, and this book is, was definitely the most challenging of, of my books. Trisha, I loved when you mm. read earlier today the opening um, and the, the, the crime you, you talked about at the beginning of the segment. Um, it happens twice, actually, yeah. right in the mm. opening. And I was just thinking as a writer sitting there uh, asking myself it would, how painful and harsh that would have to be to write that once mm -hmm. and then to do it again. The story that comes after you know, a crime that gets echoed yeah. It's so, I would think, is so much more different, yeah. right? The family can't claim it. It's sort of, sort of an anomaly or a one-time deal. Mm -hmm. There's something about that trauma that I imagine mm -hmm. carried out the rest of the book. And I just thought that was such a, yeah. a wonderful, beautiful moment. It kind of ties into what you were saying about, like, the family myth. And it, I think it happens often when people have inherited, like, this great trauma. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the Holocaust earlier, mm -hmm. comparing it to the, the pain of immigration and mm -hmm. exile. Um, that sometimes um, even something like a crime like that, that is the mm -hmm. family myth. That's the story that you yeah. kind of are forced to retell in a way that you cannot retell it in a way that recalls all that pain or you just couldn't 
didn't survive. Mm -hmm. So you, ha you know, it almost has to be mm -hmm. placed here, mm -hmm. just so that the those who experienced it can can go on. What What about? I'm curious also about influence. You know, about as writers. I mean, put Homer aside for this specific <laughs> story. Maybe he influenced you or not. But mm -hmm. but I mean, as as writers. Who, who, has, who do you think, has, who do you look to as, as your largest influences at this point? Uh, you know, for me with this, and this book in particular, having read Rinaldo Arenas was just, I mean, that's, that's where all my writing Cuban from writer, Cuba yeah. began. Yeah. Uh, I read Before Night Falls, uh -huh. and his, his vision of the island was not just, it was beautiful, it was lush, it was tragic, it was sad, it was full of rage, it was full of joy. Um, it was just, you know, it was the, one of those moments where the myth got cracked open and I saw sort of... Um, the world emerge. Um, but, you know, so he, he, for me, he was sort of a foundational author, and especially with this book, that I always go back to him, yeah. Is there a point where you have to be careful not, I mean, to put him aside? You know what, I, somebody, oh, I forget who said this, but they say, you know, they, they hear like writers talk about like, oh, I don't want to read Tolstoy because then I'll start sounding like Tolstoy. But actually that would be really great if I could write as well as Tolstoy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, if I could write a book half as good as Before Night Falls, uh -huh. I think I would be happily cribbed from uh -huh. him for the rest uh -huh. of my life. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> who, who are your influences? Um, my early literary influences are, are still books that I read when I was 14, 15 mm. years old, and I think those are the books that imprinted on me the most. They were like Marguerite Duras, James Baldwin, Colette, Anais Nin. Mm -hmm. um, but each book is different, so while I was writing this book and researching the book, I was feeding the book, you know, with... Um, with a lot of Latin American and Cuban literature because that's where I was traveling to to do my research. Um, but also, as much as literature, I'm influenced by music and mm. art and film mm -hmm. and anything that can conjure images and, and voice and language. So is there, we're just in our last minute here, but since we're at a book mm -hmm. festival, I've been asking people, is there any book that you're reading or that you want to recommend yourself? I mean, recommend to other people now? I love a Colombian writer, Juan Gabriel Vasquez, and his work is starting to be translated a lot into yeah. English, and his uh -huh. new one is called um, Reputations. Reputations. Yeah. Um, it came out in Spanish some time ago, but it's out now in English, so yeah. I would recommend anything by him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Derek? I mean, I loved the uh, Association of Small Bonds by uh, Karan Mahajan. And He'll be here uh, a little later. Great. <laughs> uh, but I also love Mara Javier Cadenas's, um The Revolutionaries Try Again from him. And I mean, I would just recommend anything that Coffee House Press translates from Spanish into English, go get it. It's such a, they do such beautiful work. I'm All just right. amazed by it. So. Derek Palacio's book is The Mortifications, Patricia Engel, The Veins of the Ocean. Thank you both very much. Thank, Thank you. you.